Hey guys and welcome back to another Unreal Engine 5 tutorial. In today's video what we're going to be doing is creating a door in which it is going to lock behind the player so they can only open this once and as soon as they've walked through it it's going to close and lock behind them. So this is great for a horror game or any game really where you want the player to be stuck in a particular location for example inside of a house or a room or anything along those lines. And I'm doing this in Unreal Engine 5 however this will also work in 4 as well. So let me hit play and show you what we're going to make today. So if I was to walk up to this door, it's obviously not actually going anywhere, but it's just to show you an, as an example. I can press E, it'll open, I walk through, and it will close behind me, and I can't go back through. If I'm pressing E, it doesn't open, it's locked, and obviously if I was on the other side, it will still be locked, and I can't open it again. Now if I press play, open it, and I walk away from it, it's not going to close, it's only going to close when I go through it so the player won't get stuck and locked out on the wrong side of the door. So this is what we're going to be going over and creating today so without further ado let me delete this code and I'll show you how I've done it. So the first thing we want to do is we want to actually create our door blueprint. So to do that we're going to hit control space to open the content browser, right click, create a blueprint class and create an actor naming this door BP or one way door whatever it is that makes the most sense for you and open it up straight away. In here, if I could open this properly, what we're going to do is go straight over to the components list on the left and add a static mesh. I'm going to name this one door SM for door static mesh and on the right change our static mesh to a door. I'm just using the SM door that comes in with the starter content, however you can obviously use whatever mesh that you want to. Once we've got that in, I'm going to deselect it and add a box collision, naming this entry box and this is going to be where the player has to be in order to be able to open the door. So I'm just going to move that to be in front of the door like so and I'm just going to scale this up to be the size that I want. So once again this box here is where the player is going to be in order to be able to open the door. So they have to be within this area here. So again make this as big or as small as you want. Once you've done that we're going to deselect it and add another box collision this one is going to be the opposite so we're going to name it exit box and this is where the player is going to walk into for the door to actually close and lock behind them so i'm going to do it just a little bit behind the door so they have to walk out a fair bit so they're definitely actually through the door so when it closes it's not going to basically drag them with it so i think that's going to be good for me when a player walks into this area here it's going to close so they're here they can open it they're here it closes so again customize this as much as you want. And once we've done all that, we're going to go over to the event graph and delete these three nodes here. What we're going to do is right click on our entry box, add event, add on component, begin overlap, move that up a bit, and right click again, add event, add on component, end overlap. Out of the other actor of these, we're going to cast to our character. So for me, that is cast to BP third person character. And again, that's going to be for both of them. The reason we're doing this is because we only want this to work for our actual character. So for our player, this is the only thing that can open it. So if you have an AI or anything else in your level, we don't want that to be able to trigger this off. Then what we're going to do is right click and get player controller. Just put that in between them like so. Then out of the top cast, just come out the execution pin. And we want to get enable input with the target being self and player controller being get player controller and for the bottom one we're going to disable input connecting in the exact same like so. So what this is going to do is when we are in close enough to be able to open the door we're going to enable the input so the player can actually open the door and when we're not close enough we're going to disable the input so we can't open the door. And to actually open the door what we're going to do is just use an input key. So you can create an action mapping however what I'm going to do is just right click and get the E keyboard event like so there we go and this now is going to trigger opening the door because this will only work when the input is enabled so when we are close enough to it is the only time it will work so that's why we can just do this here out of pressed what we're going to do is get a do once just a normal do once there so we can actually only open the door once as again that's the main point of this door and out of the completed we're going to get an add timeline like so and I'm going to just name this door timeline as that makes sense for me keeping that in the play 
and we're going to double click this to open that up and actually add in some details in here. So firstly we're going to set the length of our track. I want this to be half a second for me, 0.5, however you can do it however long you want. I just like it to be quite short, again you choose. Then we're going to hit the plus track, add a float track and name this whatever you want, so for me door track makes sense. And you'll notice this is already only half a second long, as again that's perfect for me. I'm going to right click, add key to curve float with a time of 0 and a value of 0. Then right click, add key to curve float with a time of the maximum length of your timeline, which for me is 0.5. And the value is going to be minus 100. Now if we press these two buttons here to zoom to fit vertical and horizontal, we see our timeline here. So now where have I got the value of minus 100 from? Well if we go back to our viewport, select our door, the rotation on the Z is 0 when it's closed, and if I were to put minus 100, it's going to look like that, so it is open. That's the position I want it to be in. So what you can do is just press E to rotate it and get it in the open position which you want, get the value from there and just put that into the timeline as the same way I just did it. So that's where I got that value from and that's how you can customize it for yourself as well. So again we'll compile, save, go back to the timeline, this is all good so we can close that going back to the event graph here. Now we can drag in a reference to our door static mesh. Out of this we can set relative rotation making sure it is the relative and not world into the update there and then we're going to right click the new rotation split structure pin and connect the door track into the Z leaving the X and Y as zero or if you select the door static mesh whatever it is in here so if you have rotated it on the X or Y for whatever reason you'll then obviously also just input those into there as well so that is now going to allow us to open the door but how do we automatically close it? Well, what we can do is right click on our exit box, add event and add on component begin overlap, moving that up here. Then again, we're going to come out of other actor and cast to our character. So once again, it is only the character which is going to trigger this, nothing else will, for example, an AI. And this will go into reverse of the timeline. So when we walk through the door, it's going to close it. That makes sense. And what I should also do actually is after the cast is another do once. So again, this will only happen once, perfectly like so. Now we can compile and save that and this is now the code done. And now the reason why I've created a separate box collision instead of just using the entry box for when we walk out of it is because if we walk out of the entry box here, that will obviously work because what you might do is you might have it like this. So when you walk out, we're through the door. That will obviously work perfectly. However, if you were to walk backwards, that will also trigger off, which will then close and lock the door, which we obviously don't want because then the player is on the wrong side. So the way I've done it like this instead works a lot better. So now we can minimize this and place this door into our level and we can press play to test this out. So if we walk up to it, let's say we're over here, press E, nothing happens, we're not opening it. But if we go close enough, we can press E, open the door, if we walk back it will stay open but if we walk through it will close and lock behind us i go up to it i can't press e to open it and if i'm on the other side i also can't press e to open it as well so i think that'll be it for this video as we've done everything we want to do what we've done is we've set up a door in which we can open it when we are close enough walk back and stay open but if we were to walk through it it's going to close automatically behind us and also lock as well so the player now cannot exit the room the house whatever it is where you've just locked them in they can't open it once again from either side they can't go through it so thanks so much for watching this video i hope you enjoyed it and i hope you found it helpful and if you did make a total like and subscribe down below so thanks so much for watching and i'll see you in the next one